Hi there. We're going to walk you through the tool right now to uh, do a demo project and basically show you how easy it is to use the sampleweighting.com uh, tool. So um, starting on the home page, we went to sampleweighting.com. And as you can see, you can take a free trial or you can log in. I've prepared an account uh, for this demonstration, so I'm just going to go right ahead and log in right now. So upon login, I'll get up to the sign-up screen. I'll have to enter my email address and my password. There we go, and we log in. So the first screen we're going to see is our uh, dashboard. It basically shows the latest projects that you've run. I've ran a few, but we're just going to do a new project. So on the left side, under waiting, we're going to select new project. And the first thing uh, that you're going to see is that the screen will prompt you to, uh, to enter a project name. So we'll just call this one uh, test project one. So now after entering a name, um, I can drag uh, or drop uh, a file in here uh, to upload the data. I'm going to click. Uh, I'm going to select the data that I have ready here, which is the example survey data household by age. I'm going to open this. And as you can see, Immediately, I can see the file name uh, uh, was uploaded properly. I see the headers uh, of the data that's inside the data, inside the data set. In this case, it's uh, respondent ID, household, and uh, age group. We see that we have 2,015 rows or cases inside the file, and the file size is 42 kilobytes. You can change a file if something is wrong, but we're going to proceed by clicking Continue. So now in the next step, we're going to have to select the variables that we actually want to use for a weighting. Uh, as you can see, the respondent ID is grayed out because there's only unique values in, uh, in each line. So we cannot select that for weighting. We're going to go right ahead and select the household variable and the age group variable that we want to use for weighting. Below, you see there's a sequence that you, can, uh, that you can change if you want to. For now, we're just going to skip over this. We also don't have a group variable in this, uh, in this demonstration, so I'm just going to click Continue to proceed with just these two variables, household and age group. Continue. So now we are in step three, which is setting the actual targets for this project. As you can see in this, uh, in this screen, you see both variables that we've selected, household and age group, and there are values that, uh, that are contained within those variables. So household, we have a one person household. We can actually type that in here if we'd like to. One person household, two person household, three person, and the fourth category is four and larger person households. Uh, the tool also displays the current unweighted distribution in your file. So that is basically the percentages that are found in your data. So 0.201 means that is 20.1% of your uh, um, household members are in a one-person household. So let's say that the target is actually supposed to be 20%. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and enter, uh, we're going to make this into 20% say 50%, 15 percent, and and 15 percent. As you can see, it now adds up to 100 percent again, or one. Um, then it be, turns green, and we can actually proceed. Uh, the second variable is age group. I've actually prepared a little file on the side that I can select from Excel and paste right into here, which makes it easy, of course. So category one is 18 to 24 year olds, category two is 25 to 34 year olds, and so on. Um, again, we have the unweighted distributions that we see in the, in the file. And as for the targets, um, I've prepared those as well. So I can just go ahead and copy paste those right in here. Um, so now we see that instead of actually, uh, in our file, we have 4.8% of 18 to 24-year-olds, which we actually want it to be 10% in, uh, in our weighted data set. So um, let's 
continue here and proceed to click continue. Now in this final step, we get to add a couple of uh, uh, functions that we can use, uh, namely the max iterations we can enter if you will. I suggest you just leave it at the default of 200. Um, what a lot of uh, researchers do like to apply is a maximum weight factor for trimming weights or for capping weights. Um, we'll show you in another video how to apply those. For now, I'm just going to let the tool just run free and uh, see what, with what kind of maximum factor we un end up with without constraining it uh, before, um, before we proceed. So yeah, and the population size is the final option. If you'd like your weighted results uh, to, to, to um, <laughs> did the OKF okay, knip, yeah. pluck. Uh, the final option down here, population size, we're going to leave blank as well for this, uh, for this video, and we'll come back to that later. Let's go ahead and uh, generate the report for this project. So I click Generate, and now we see that my project is queued for processing. This usually takes a couple of seconds, depending on how many cases you have in your data file or how many variables in you, you have in your data file. But uh, this project with 2,000 cases is ready now, so it took maybe uh, five seconds to run. And what we get here is the report of our, uh, of our project. So let's just run through the, the, the project uh, real quick. Uh, the report is telling us we have the 2,015 cases, so that's correct. The effective base is a measure for how uh, heavy your weighting was done, um, and it actually shows how much your, uh, what the effective sample size actually is. In this case, the effective sample size is reduced from 2015 to 1,873 cases. And below you see the effective base, which is actually a measure for how efficient your weighting has been done. Also. We're not going to get into all the details here. We just want to show you how it works, so we'll get back to that in a different video. Uh, it shows the sequence of the variables. The tool needed 13 iterations to get the job done. The optimal fit was achieved. We did not enable a max factor, and we also didn't enter a population size, so those are showing disabled right now. What is really important is, of course, your minimum and maximum weights. In this case, the minimum weight is 0.79 and we have a maximum weight of 2.4. Now what the best uh, or maximum allowed weight is will depend from study to study, from researcher to researcher. Um, some people say I don't want any weight factors higher than two. Others say I don't want any higher weight factors than five. It's really up to you as a researcher what you find is, uh, is permissible in your study. Um, the tool will just uh, do what you tell it to do. If you think 2.4 is too high, you want to cap it at two, you can enter 2 as a maximum weight factor in the tool, and it will cap, uh, cap it for you. Again, different video. Uh, in the report, the most important thing is, and I'm just going to scroll down to the end. Okay, so I'm scrolling down to the bottom of the screen, and here we see the variables that we've just entered. We see them on screen, namely household and age group. We see the labels that we've entered, one person, two person, three person, four person. We've seen the targets that we've entered, namely 20% uh, that we want uh, households with a one-person, sorry, <laughs> namely 20% for one-person households. We see that in our sample, it's 20.1%. We see that the weighted result matches our target, namely 20%. We have an average load for this group of 0 0.99, and the fit is exactly 1%. Second line, similar of course, the target is 50%, the unweighted sample is 54%. Uh, weighted, it's exactly, it matches the target, namely 50%. Uh, and to get that target, this group needs to be multiplied with an average load of 0 0.92. Um, and the, the, the similar, of the same goes for the, for the rest of the variables. So we now see that um, our weighted sample matches the targets that we've entered. So this all looks uh, very good. Okay, so now we're happy with the results that we see in our report, and we actually want to download our, uh, our results now. So I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to click on the, the yellow button, Download Weighted Results. It's gonna, the tool is going to tell me now that this is going to cost me one credit to download the results. So I'm going to confirm. And the tool returns, uh, it lets me download an Excel worksheet, which I'm just going to download on my uh, desktop for now. There it is. 
So let's open it. And there it is. So on the left here, I have the data I uploaded and on the right, the data that which I just downloaded back from the tool. As you can see, both data sets are identical, except in the downloaded data set here on the right, uh, the application has added a column D with the variable name weight. And for each respondent in this file, you see the individual weight factors it has calculated so that you get the results that you need. So you can go right ahead and um, upload this data into your SPSS file or uh, uh, R or whatever uh, statistical program you use to, to weight your data set. So here in the My Project Overview, you will see all the projects that you've done in the, in the past. You can click on any project uh, to look at the report or to change any settings or to rerun your program or to download your uh, data set again. We've already downloaded uh, this data set, you, so once you've uh, downloaded it once, you can download it as much as you want uh, after that without paying any credits. Um, so we can go back here into the project, download the results here again. And that's really it. Those are the steps. So summarizing, you upload your data, select the variables you need, enter the targets that you want your data set to represent, click Run, and uh, the tool does the rest and gives you back the data, the data with the weight column that you need. So good luck on your weighting projects, and I hope this helps a lot.